Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Internet. It's round. It's the final round of the FI Motocross World Championships. Let's take a look what happened in race one, shall we? We're running slightly over here because of the final round of MX2. Here's what happened MXGP race one. MXGP race one then over on the far side. Roman Fevre got a good jump over Jeffrey Hurlings, but it was Jorge Prado who crossed the foxhole shot line for the 17th time this season. Going into turn two though, Fevre was right there with Siwa, Cairoli, Hurlings, uh, Matis Borome, Kevin Stribos. And as Prado led, Hurlings quickly into fourth. With that move on Cairoli, then Tim Geiser found his way past the 222 to move into fifth place. This was lap two. Then Jeremy Seaworth just tipped over from third. That handed the advantage to Jeffrey Hurlings, who now had clear track to go after Roman Fevre. He then sighed his way down the inside of the Frenchman, took over the lead. Remember, these two were separated by three points coming into this first race. Almost immediately, Hurlings then went around the outside of Prado to take over the lead, and then it was game on. And all of a sudden, the pressure was on for Roman Fevre to do the same. That's exactly what he did. He moved into second. We were all square at the top of the championship. Tim Geiser then found his way to third with a pass on Jorge Prado. Jeremy Siwa and Tony Cairoli fighting over fifth, sixth place. The Swiss found his way through. And then at the end of the next straight, Cairoli went for a gap that wasn't really there. The two collided as he picked himself up. His gear shift was broken off by the rear wheel that was spinning of the Yamaha of Jeremy Siwa. Cairoli was out. Siwa continued on in the race. He eventually came home in fourth. Thomas Kier Olsen had a good ride as well to come home in sixth. Making moves like that on Ruben Fernandez. This was Siwa moving into fourth place with a pass on Jorge Prado with a handful of laps to go. The pressure was on though. The top three in the championship, first, second, third in the race. But it was Jeffrey Hurlings with his 14th win of the year. February second, Geisa third. See what Prado, your top five. Well, as the atmosphere, atmosphere continues to build, let's go down to pit lane or the uh, the start line area. Lisa was down there earlier for a pre-grid with Danny Petrosa, no less. We are almost ready for the final race of the season and perhaps the most tense and nail-biting race we're ever going to watch. Uh, but before we have that race, let's catch up with a, a MotoGP legend. It's uh, Danny Pedrosa. Danny, firstly, welcome to uh, MXGP. It's great to have you here. But let's chat a little bit about you. Uh, I know, obviously, you're retired and you're a test rider for KTM at the moment. You did one wild card ride this year as well, didn't yeah. you? So just tell us about your season. Yeah, well, it's been great. Uh, despite the complications with COVID, the restrictions, etc., we could do a lot of program for the, for the development of the bike. And I'm uh, pretty happy to do one wild card because I, I didn't actually expect to, to do it, but it was very interesting for us, so it was a, a good uh, weekend and I enjoyed it a lot. And of course, being here at motocross, you've trained in motocross before, haven't you? Like, you have ridden a bike, but not obviously professionally. Yeah, I like motocross since I'm a child, so I follow all the time with my father and and actually I, I practice sometimes, but I'm not as good. Yeah. I don't have the same skill as a, as a road, but I'm really, really uh, happy to be here yeah. to watch this great final. And Danny, I have to say, you are at perhaps the best race all year because it's gone down to the wire. The final race, they're joint on points. Jeffrey Roman, obviously you're here with Red Bull KTM, so I'm kind of guessing who you're supporting. <laughs> of course, uh, but yeah, like you say, is the, the race everyone wants to see yeah so cross uh, fingers crossed to see the the result and, and hopefully to, to watch a good battle great to have you here Danny enjoy the rest of your thank day you. thank Bye. you okay it's the race we've all been waiting for MXGP race two and what an exciting prospect we have here's how the top five looks in six eight three apiece for Jeffrey Hurlings and Roman Fevre Tim Geiser, 17 points further back, and then we've got Jorge Prado, Jeremy C. We're both tied on fourth place. So uh, which way is this one going to go, folks? What a way to end the season, though.
Right, coming into the final race then, Jeffrey Hurlings, Roman Fevre, they are tied on points. The only other time we have seen this, 1988, the 125 season, Jean-Michel Bale and Dave Stribos. After race one, going into the final round, both riders were tied for the lead with just one race remaining. Bale won from Stribos to win the championship by three. Who is it going to be today, though? Jeffrey Hurlings or Roman Fevre? Hurlings starts from pole. Fevre will go alongside him. There might be shenanigans going into the first turn. Jeremy Sewell will line up third ahead of Prado, Bogus, Geiser, Thomas Kier Olsen and Antonio Cairoli. Glenn Coldenop and Mattis Borromé ran out the top ten. You've got the rest of the guys there. Dylan Wright with his best qualifying of the campaign in his five rounds as a wild carder here coming from Canada. We will say goodbye to Kevin Stribos, Sean Simpson and Tony Cairoli at the end of today as they hang up their MXGP helmets and boots. But there is just the one massive matter remaining. Who will be crowned world champion? Everywhere you go in the paddock, everybody you talk to, all of the same opinion. They don't have an opinion in terms of who will win the championship. Tim Geiser, 17 points down. As long as there are 25 points on the table, he still has a shot. But it depends what happens down on those inside gates. Tony Cairoli, his final race as a professional racer for Red Bull KTM Factory Racing. He's got nothing to lose. Is he going to win the final race of the year? I don't think I have ever experienced. I was around when the Dave Stribos JMB title went down to the wire, but I wasn't there at the track, so I didn't feel, I wasn't part of that anticipation. I think Jeffrey Hurling's trying to get uh, rid of the cameraman there. We are all go at the back of the grid almost. Fans on their feet. The anticipation is through the roof. If ever a start was important, it's now. Two riders over on this side. Jeffrey Hurlings, Roman Fevre. We've got a green flag. For the final time this year, the Fly Racing 15-second board is up. We will have a world champion after this race. MXGP race two is gone. A good jump once again, and it's Fevre who squeezes Hurlings to the inside. Jorge Prado once again. And the top two in the championship, Linus Stern, as they go through there, and also Geiser splits Fevre and Hurlings. But it's Fevre with the upper hand at the moment in second position, and Geiser tries to run it down the inside of Hurlings. What a prospect we've got here. The first three in the championship, second, third, fourth in the race. Where is Tony Cairoli? He's buried somewhere in about 11th place. As Prado disappears at the head of the field, we'll worry about that at the moment, but it's probably foxhole shot number 18 for the Spaniard. Oh, mistake there from Fevre allows Hurlings up the inside. Geiser there in fourth, Bogus in fifth, Seawitt in sixth, Colden off seven. And Fevre takes over the lead at the first uh, time of asking. He knows he's got to be aggressive, he closes down the door on Prado. Strike one to Fevre. Prado looks over his shoulder, sees the orange flash right next to him, gives him all the room in the world in which to work, and he does. This is a direct shootout between the top two in the world right now, Roman Fevre and Jeffrey Hurlings. The fans have got exactly what they want to see. Geiser decisive as well, past Prado. He moves into third place, top of the hill.
thought Hurlings was a nip up the inside there, but just no way through. The pressure on these two is incredible. The way they're dealing with it, absolutely phenomenal. Get through the first lap. That would have been the message from the team. Get through the first turn, get through the first lap unscathed, and then see where you're at. Fevre leading the way. Erling second, Geiser, Prado, Bogus, Siwa six, Koldenhoff seven, Ruben Fernandez eight, Van Horovic nine, Strybos in tenth place. Then we've got Cairoli 11, Olsen 12. Hurlings goes to the inside, no way through there either, just too far back, and there wasn't enough uh, depth in that rut for him just to get on the gas cleanly. Dylan Wright 15, Poirame, Koch, Brilikov, Jasakonis, and Van Donick rounding out the top 20. The sun hazy. Visibility not at a premium. And we've got a rough and rugged racetrack here for the final round in Mantova. You can sense the atmosphere, you can see it. Smoke flares, noise. And the top two riders in the world going for the championship are first and second in the race. The top three in the world are line astern, first, second and third. How much of a role will Tim Geiser play in the outcome of this championship in MXGP? Between Roman Fevre and Jeffrey Hurlings, the scenario is simple. You beat the rider, you win the championship. They are tied on points going into this last race. Fevre holds it by three at the moment. By leading Hurlings. Hurlings finds his way past. He wins the championship, and he parks Fevre to the outside. We've got a new leader on lap two. He knew he had to be aggressive. It was a firm but fair move, though, at the top of the hill that saw Hurlings take over the lead. Oh, Fevre at the back end came around left and right as he took off. Two laps complete, 26 minutes plus two to go. I hope you've got big seats because pretty soon you're going to be finding your way to the edge even further as this race goes on, if you're not on the edge of them already. Tim Geiser, is he just letting these guys get on with it, yes or no? Will there be a sting in the tail later on, yes or no? Pit Byra. He's never seen anything like this either, I expect. Roman Fevre probably in the best seat at the moment. As long as Hurlings doesn't pull too clear, he can sit there, watch and learn and apply the pressure and strike as and when he needs to. They often say it's easier to follow than it is to lead. But these guys have won world championships. They know what it's like to lead. Could do with our track mics being back, please. Prado here. He's in fourth place. Jeremy Siwa all over the back of him as it stands right now. First, second, third in race one. Our first, second, third again. Slightly different order. Or is it the same, actually? Hurlings, Fevre, Geiser, same as it was. Back over on this side of the circuit. See what looking for a way through on Prado. Roman Fevre has lost a bit of time. It was eight tenths between him and Hurlings last time around. But, for, but Hurlings has just pulled the pin of 56-4. Two lap times in quick succession for Jeffrey Hurlings. The gap now has gone out to 2.1 seconds. Still can't afford to make a mistake, nor can Roman Fevre. He definitely can't be caught and passed by Tim Geiser. But it's been a fantastic championship, hasn't it? No matter what happens now. Meanwhile, Prado still hanging on in fourth. Coming towards us now, but uh, Siwa alongside him. Going through turn five. Takes a quick look across, make sure he's got some clearance there between front and back wheel. 
gets squeezed, has to pull out, just takes a different line, wants that forward momentum, just to try and, try and generate some drive through the waves. Gets alongside the Spaniard. This is for fourth place. Meanwhile, Tony Cairoli still down in 10th position in his final race as an MXGP racer. Didn't make the best start and he's been parked back there. Difficult to make up time. Prado doing his best to keep the Yamaha man behind him though. Just behind them, Brian Bogus, the standing construct, Gas Gas. Fantastic ride for him, he's in sixth position. Not letting these two get too far away. Oh, he tried to go outside, didn't he? But as we've seen so many times, Prado does like to ride a very wide KTM at times, and uh, see what taking him wide, and he does make the pass stick for fourth. Meanwhile, first, second, third. Hurling's already down past pit lane. 3.6 seconds clear now. 155.9. For him, a 57.4, a 57.5 for Fevre and Geiser, respectively. Geiser just sitting there patiently. Roman Fevre, when he took the red plate a couple of rounds ago, said he hasn't felt the pressure of the championship lead or the red plate. And he has been very, very good in that respect. Hasn't buckled, hasn't crumbled. He's second in the race, though. But the racetrack, do you race it, do you ride it? What's the, the best scenario? Because you can race it and can bite you back. But you can ride it. Oh, Fevre is down, coming out of the turn. It's hard and slick there as well. So I wonder whether he's done a Prado there, who did that last year. You come out of the turn, hit those skittery bumps, and go bang, 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 and then all of a sudden you're down. Under pressure all of a sudden then. Watch this here. Watch the back end. Does it go left and right? Oh, off the back. Fevre loops out from second. So Geiser now into second position. Fevre may still be in third, and he is. But a scenario that, D, that he did not want. There's Hurlings in the opposite corner, heading towards the end of lap five. Well, if he did have anything in the tank, Roman Fevre, he has got to empty it in the next 20 minutes. He has got to go for broke. And that means qualifying lap after qualifying lap after qualifying lap for the next 25 minutes. Cost him 10 seconds. That fall. The back end just gripped and just spat him off the back. Give him a couple of corners, just get himself sorted. See what he does from here. There's the championship as it stands right now. The gap will be five points in it by the time they reach the chequered flag, if it stays like that. But 19 and a half minutes plus two laps is an awfully long way, especially when it's the final race of the year. The gap between first and second, Hurlings and Geiser, five and a half seconds. Takes a slightly different line on the exit of the turn that time around. Roman Fevre, probably no fault of his own, just one of those things. It gripped, spat him off the back. Does not need Jeremy Seward trailing him like this, though. Looks across. Surveys what's on the other side of the track. His gap to uh, Hurlings is 13 and a half seconds. Needs to maintain that focus. Being urged on by the fans here. The gap between him and Hurling still there, look, same as it was. 
Geiser closing in slightly, I think. 5.4 it was. A couple of tenths here and there, and uh, first and uh, second and third sectors, but let's have a look this time around. A 58.8 and a 57.8, a full second pulled back. 4.4 seconds then between first and second. Tim Geiser can go and win the last race here, you know. Every third, C were fourth. Prado fifth, Bogus sixth, Fernandez seventh. He's found his way past Koldenov. Van Orbeek is ninth, Cairoli ten, Olsen eleven. Here is Roman Fevre, his lap time. A lap after being spat off the back is a 159.5. Tim Geiser was a 57.8. Hurlings was a 58.8. The team in which he rides for, at Monster Energy Kawasaki, that infrastructure will cease to exist at the end of this season. When he took the championship leader's red plate, you, fen you felt there was a fairy tale in the making. It might still happen, but that depends on what happens in the next 20 minutes. This is what happened, though. Just got on the gas and the thing just gripped. And nowhere to go. Fevre was off the back. He has broken free from Jeremy Sewer, though. That is a positive point for the Frenchman. Just needs to get his head down now, doesn't he? See if he can pick up the pieces. Here is Jeffrey Hurlings, the Red Bull KTM, number 84. Also knows he can't afford any mistakes. Yes, he may have four and a half seconds over Tim Geiser. We've seen how easy it is to make a mistake. Came in a bit long there, though. This was the pass. Took him to the bank, not once, but twice. That was a defining moment in the race for the championship. And possibly the defining, but I would say the defining moment was Fevre. Going out of second, dropping to third. Still 4.4 seconds between first and second. Fevre still lapping slightly slower, three quarters of a second or so than these two. Dutch fans are waving flags. The French for Fevre, the Slovenians for Geiser. And what's been an absolutely epic journey in 2021. Here's Tony Cairoli. He's just had an epic journey, full stop. Nine world championships in 18 years of a professional racer. No podium visit for him today. No race wins for him today. Not the way he would have wanted to end it. But we can't gloss over what he's achieved. He did win a motocross the nations this year, don't forget. Here's the Jerry man, Jeremy Van Horvick, the number 89, the beta SDM course rider. Haven't seen too much of the Jerry man this year, but he's in ninth position at the moment. Just behind Kai Rowley, Alessandro Lupino, the MRT KTM rider. Right, let's go back to the first race, show you some incidents from there. This was Kai Rowley and Siwa. Down the inside, those two came together. If we leave the image long enough, you watch when Siwa picks his bike up. The rear wheel is spinning. You watch as it hits the gear lever. You see the toe piece. Ah, too late. There you go. Just broke off right there. Gear lever gone. Tony Cairoli out of the race at that point. Eight laps complete. 15.4 seconds between first and third. Still half a second, six tenths slower than the guys leading the race, though. Roman Fevre. Has he had to accept the championship is over? Or is he still positive that something good can come out of this second race? Well, the way Jeffrey Hurlings is riding at the moment, nice and smooth. The only one that's going to defeat him is himself. 
printed shirt man gives him a wide berth. The number 79 of Timothy Perrault. He knew he needed a good start. He's had two of those today, despite being squeezed to the inside by his title rival. Uh, Brian Bogus is up into fifth. He's found his way past Jorge Prado. Uh, here's Roman Fever, he's in third. And uh, Jeremy Sewer in that battle for fourth in the championship. With that move on Prado earlier on, has actually got himself into fourth in the championship chase. 5 6 C, 6, 5 6 3 to Prado. So uh, we're looking at it as it stands right now. Hurling's on top with 7 08. Five points clear of Fevre. Then Geiser, Siwa, who's now clear of Prado. Number three, Roman Fevre. Took the championship lead. A couple of rounds ago. And he's dealt with that pressure. What pressure, he said. Meanwhile, just taking a quick look over his shoulder as the gap starts to shrink between first and second. There is Fevre. Not the way he would have wanted to uh, concede defeat, if he even has conceded defeat at the moment. Just trying to focus on doing everything right, if he can. Again, the lap time's dropping away. He's now 17 seconds down on Jeffrey Hurlings. Geiser still pushing on though, 57.4 lap time last time around. Jeffrey Hurlings, 58.2. Geiser's probably worked out that, you know what? I can still win the race, go out on a high. Jeffrey Hurlings can win the championship if he wants. Looks like he's just warming up, doesn't it? Tim Geiser warming into this race. Had his moment here in time practice earlier on in the day. So there's Fevre. Who else is locked in their own little battles in the race? We've got Prado and Koldenhoff locked together. We've got Cairoli and Lupino. Well, nothing's going to change there. 10th, 11th. Olsen, Watson and Dylan Wright. They're two, three seconds apart. They are down in 12th, 13th and 14th position. But the gap now, less than three seconds between Hurlings and Geiser, a 58-4 and a 57-8. Is Jeffrey Hurlings now starting to think about the championship with 10 minutes plus two laps to go? To even think that when he got landed on by Ivo Monticelli in Holland, go on to win the race, miss the second race, miss a whole round, and come back to the final race, tied on points. Unthinkable. But he's done it, he's dug deep. He's had a few scrapes along the way as well, hasn't he? Tim Geiser just reeling him in, though. Another tenth at sector one. Half a second at sector two. And I'm sure Hurling's more than aware of what's going on around him. Sector three up the middle hill, which is where they're approaching now. 25.1. 25.3, gains a couple tenths. In some respects, you almost... Does he need to be in a race just to keep his mind sharp and focused, or is it that he's so used to being out in front that he knows how to deal with this? The difference is, he can't afford to make a mistake. Not now, not the final race, not with eight and a half minutes to go. 
despite an 18 second advantage over Roman Fevre. Top of the shot there a moment ago. The gap now 2.7 seconds. So Tim Geiser just teasing Jeffrey Hurlings now as he gets closer and closer to the Red Bull man. Either way, we are eight minutes plus two laps from an MXGP world champion being crowned. Will it be a fifth for Jeffrey Hurlings or a second for Roman Fevre? At the moment, it's going the way of Hurlings and KTM. What a season it's been. It has absolutely had everything. That's the live championship as it stands right now. Hurlings, Fevre and Geiser. For Fevre to win, of course, he needs just to beat Jeffrey Hurlings. The gap between them, 19.2 seconds at the start of this lap. Hurlings seemingly in control, doesn't need to win the race. Just needs, needs to beat Roman Fevre, that's it. This Mantova racetrack has thrown up everything over the past couple of days. And we're going to see a champion crowned. Just trying to pick his lines, trying not to rush anything. Geiser closing in, though. Every lap. It's not going to be 2.7 seconds this time around. It's 1.9. He's never been in this position before. Chasing the championship in the final race of the year. Fifty-eight-seven, 57.9. Respectively, Hurlings and Geiser. And obviously you can see the gap coming down. And it would appear with a 21 second point, uh, 21 second deficit now, Roman Fevre has all but conceded defeat after that mistake when he was in second. Geiser would love to get a race win though, wouldn't he? There's Kai Rowley. Tony Cairo is still there in 10th place. Red Bull KTM Factory Racing. Lupino just behind him. And then in the background there, we've got Olsen, Wright and Watson. So Watson losing positions. Just go back behind Lupino. Dylan Wright has found his way past Thomas Kier Olsen as well. So he's made two passes in the last couple of laps. There's Dylan Wright, the Honda 114 rider. There's Lupino, back marker, and then Wright of Canada. Here is the 109. So Dylan Wright has found his way past both the factory Husqvarna of Thomas Kier Olsen and the factory Yamaha of Ben Watson. And what's his final visit into MXGP? Just signed up for the last five rounds. Struck a deal after the motocross the nations. There's AJ just getting through the turn as well. Right, Hurlings comes into land. Four and a half minutes plus two to go. Nothing in it between him and Geiser. Geiser has decided just to go for broke and just go for the race win. Just over a second between them. Is he going to win the championship with the race win as well as the overall Grand Prix victory? Or is he going to let Tim just take the race win and he walk off with the world championship? Fevre in turn two, just opposite on the left-hand side, coming out of turn two at the end of pit lane. 23 seconds adrift. The Geiser fans all of a sudden getting fired up as Geiser goes through and closes in on the bullet. Not going to affect the overall championship outcome. Pit Byra, not sure if he can watch or not.
But there was a post on Instagram, wasn't there, a few weeks ago. Jeffrey Hurling's put out there, he said, when everyone else doubted me, he didn't. And there was a picture of him and Pitt Byra. How big has that support been from the main man at KTM Racing? He's seen a lot, has Pitt Byra. Two forty. Still going to be four laps to go, isn't it? Race one, eighteen laps, thirteen in the books, fourteen now. So two and a half minutes, pretty much, as they hit the line. The gap now just creeping out ever so slightly, one point nine. So a good reaction this from from Hurlings. Turn two over the iPhone. Then into the left hander that is turn four. To see the ruts there, the different lines going in. Geiser not giving up on the race win. Has seven already this year. Still doing everything right. The number 84. It was a shame that Roman Fevre went down here when he did, because there wasn't a lot in it between the first three at that point. But all it has done is given Geiss a clear track to go after number 84. In the final four laps, he's been closing, closing, closing. Will he just run out of time? Talk about focus, Jeffrey Hernings. Now that he's got Geiser there for close company, maybe just resharpen the mind ever so slightly, stopping it wandering. Not an easy racetrack. You see how high the berm is there, just by the Husk Barna banner. That is also in danger of just being pushed through. Geiser getting ready then for a final push, the final three laps of 2021. He's right onto the rear wheel of the Red Bull KTM, but can the HRC man find a way through before the chequered flag? And if he can, will it come with an invite or will it just be a racing pass? Digging in deep through the first turn. 1.2 seconds, but it looks less than that as they tip into turn two. Meanwhile, just outside the top 10, Dylan Wright closing in on Tony Kai Rowley. been a long, arduous slog, this race, hasn't it? 30 minutes plus two is, is the same distance every week, but when you're leading and you're going for the championship, it comes down to the first one to blink or make a mistake. Fevre, unfortunately, made the mistake through this corner early on in second position. That just gave some breathing space to Jeffrey Hurlings, who was already ahead of him and therefore in control of the championship because the scenario going in was Hurlings beats Fevre, he wins the championship. Fevre beats Hurlings, he wins the championship. It was straightforward. But Geiser wants to win the race. He is getting closer. Back end dancing around, and uh, back end coming around on him through there. See how that berm just disappeared there. Hurlings rode his luck. A lap ago, we said the top of that berm in the middle of the Husqvarna banner was in danger of breaking when those two came around a lap ago, and Hurlings almost went through it. Two laps to go. Two 
Still over a second, just separating these two. This is now, watch this here, not this turn, but just after that, there was a Husqvarna turn at the bottom of the hill, and just half a lap ago, where Hurlings almost put his front wheel through the end of it. But these two still separated by just over a second. And it's now Hurlings Championship to lose. From this point on, Started the day, three points down on Roman Fevre. Leveled it up after race one with a win. He's got a good start. And they're getting ready to pop the corks. A lap and a half to go. He still leads the way, does Jeffrey Hurlings. I wonder if he'll take, take a, a slightly different line at the bottom of this next hill. A lap ago, he was high and wide, and the berm collapsed. Yeah, he's in the inside. You can see it, look, right in the middle. The berm has disappeared where Geiser is. He had to check up then as well. But the party already starting in the Netherlands. Jeffrey Hurlins a lap away from taking his fifth world title. Three in MX2. He was world champion in MXGP at the second time of asking. It's the final lap now for Jeffrey Hurlings. He is a lap away, less than two minutes from being crowned world champion for the fifth time. Geiser so far hasn't been able to find a way through to take over the lead. And as it stands right now, Jeffrey Hurlings is on course for taking his 15th race win of the season. And with it, the overall championship. Still got some thinking to do though. Needs to maintain that focus. Geiser not going to let him off the hook. He will keep him honest right the way to the chequered flag. Looking at taking his ninth Grand Prix victory of the campaign. And GP win number 99. Geiser getting closer though. A flash of red right there in the background. Just starting to pick it up a little bit. Geiser goes wide. Looking for the drive. Geiser just going to run out of time. Roman Fevre, 36 seconds back. No more effective in this championship chase. Just a couple of corners to go for number 84. And Jeffrey Hurlings. He's about to cross the line as a five-time world champion. No celebrations here. Jeffrey Hurlings, out of the final turn, is the 2021 MXGP world champion. He joins Roger De Costa, Joel Robert, Georges Jobet, Joel Smets as a five-time world champion. He does it here at the final round, the final race of 2021, and what has been the most epic contest we've seen in more than 30 years. Big hug there for Pitt Byra. It is pandemonium down here on the start line. Valentina Ranyu there, the team coordinator. He will make his way somewhere to grab a word. Oh, there's Mum. Proud Mum there, just over the shoulder. Congratulations, Jeffrey Hurlings in Red Bull KTM Factory Racing.
Heinz Kinnigadner, a two-time world champ there as well. Hook for the misses. And the Gampy Show, there in the puffer. Probably a few friends in there as well, but Jeffrey Hurlings victorious here at the final round in Mantua. And here he is getting ready to speak to Lisa Leyland. An absolute grand finale here, the final round. His 15th race win of the season. But more importantly, he is world champion. Jeffrey Hurlings, massive congratulations. You really are the best rider in the world. You're the 2021 MXGP world champion. Thank you. Just want to say one thing, you know, a lot of people wanted to know what I would have done if I didn't win this championship this year again. I guess you'll never know. <laughs> Short and sweet then from Jeffrey Hurlings. But what a season it has been, whichever way you look at it. And we'll go do the podium ceremonies now, but we've got about 12 minutes to get through this lot. But Grand Prix win number 99 for the career of Jeffrey Hurlings. His 131st podium, his fifth world championship. And his fifth world title. Going to be noisy down there a little later on, if it's not already. Once again, what an absolutely fantastic season. Two good starts. Made it easy. I say this sort of, uh, with all respect, made it easier for him in the fact that he didn't make bad starts and wasn't having to come through. Two good starts, kept him out of trouble. He was able to go on then and ride his own race. He took the challenge to Roman Fevre in race one when he was three points down. He levelled up the score. Both riders came out swinging as uh, Frederick Vial congratulates Jeffrey Hurlings, the new world champion. Davy Strybos there, just over the left. He was the one in 1988 with Jean-Michel Bale, who also went into the final race of the final year of the championship on a tie break that time with Jean-Michel Bale in the 125 World Championship but the atmosphere there and Massimo Castelli the first from Honda to congratulate him but Jeffrey Hurlings is a five-time world champion in what has been the most epic and closest championship campaign certainly in the history of the MXGP era but in a long time more than 30 years 15 race wins, 9 Grand Prix victories, his 99th career win as well. On his way to his fifth world title, Jeffrey Hurlings, world champion, MXGP 2021. And let the big, the, uh, <laughs> and let the party begin. So Jeffrey Hurlings wins race one from Tim Geiser, Roman Fevre third. Jeremy Sewell fourth, Brian Bogus, Ruben Fernandez, Prado, Koldenoff, Van Horbeek, and Tony Cairoli. Dylan Wright 11th, Sandro Lupino 12th, Olsen 13th, and with Watson, Jessica Tom Cock. Brent Van Donick, Sean Simpson, Valentin Gio, and Kevin Strybos picking up a point in his final World Championship race. Sean Simpson also picking up points in his final championship race. The overall classification, Jeffrey Hurlings wins. Here in Mantua, the final round, Tim Geiser second, Roman Fevre third, Siwa and Prado ran out the top five. And for the championship, and the MXGP World Championship decided here at the final round, Jeffrey Hurlings wins it by five points over Roman Fevre. Tim Geiser third, Siwa takes fourth from Prado in the final race of the year. Tony Cairoli bows out with six overall in his final championship campaign. But if you're watching anywhere else in the world, outside of Europe, what about that for a spectacle? KTM win the Manufacturers' Championship over Kawasaki, Honda third, Yamaha, Gas Gas, Husqvarna and Beta. 
but what about that and sure this right here is why you would want to come to MXGP they like a flag they like to make some noise and they like to show the support for their riders their heroes these are the best fans in the world and he is the best rider in the world what's going through the mind of Ruben Turler at the moment <laughs> Maybe we should get a word with Reuben. He looks like he's spent cold one, Reuben. We are the champions. We are the champions. Right there. That's all you need to know. The fan zone, this side of the fence. Press and teams, the other side of the fence. That is not a bad view for the final podium of the year looking out this way. And here's the scenario with the last races all being decided in Italy. And when it was three points, three riders, three rounds, you kind of go, OK, well, the teams then need to order the merch for the celebratory stuff, like what he's just put on now. There were three teams that have made a bunch of that stuff. Only one gets to display it. Well displayed. Ruben still can't believe it. That has been a stress and a toll. I'm sure he never wants to go through ever again. Yeah, shed yourself a tear, young man. A lot going through his mind right now, Ruben Turalura, his, his practice mechanic, his confident, his best mate. And the one who's not afraid to tell him when he's doing wrong. Well, as you can hear, absolute pandemonium down there at the podium. But what a cracking round, what a cracking season we have had in 2021. Will it get better than that next year? Well, I hope so. I absolutely hope so. Tony Cairoli, grazie Tony. There's a lot of flags down there. There's a lot of stuff happening down here for Tony because obviously it's his final race, his final Grand Prix. Told there might be a slight lap of honor with the checkered flag. Maybe we'll see a snippet of that at the moment, in a moment, but uh, Jeffrey Hurlings makes his way to the podium as a five-time world champion. Tim Geiser, third overall in 2021. Been a long, tough season. Congratulations from Tim to Dirk Grubel. He won the last two championships back to back. But he has to be content with third overall this season. How costly was that penalty here on Sunday? And how would that have changed the outcome here today? We will never know. Third overall at the final round. Monster Energy, Kawasaki's Roman Fevre. He put in a gallant effort in the last few rounds. He put himself in a position where he led the championship coming into the final round. Tim Geiser, second overall Team HRC today at the MXGP of Cheetah Di Mantova. Jeffrey Hurlings, Red Bull KTM Factory Racing wins the final round. It's his ninth Grand Prix victory of the season. His 99th career win. A big day, big moment for the team as well. And the biggest roar from Dirk Grubel. Incredible scenes here in Mantova. Third place though for Roman Fevre at the final round. You can see the disappointment on his face. He came so close. Kawasaki came so close and yet so far. 
The AMZS president. I think this Slovenian second overall for Tim Geiser at this final round. Couldn't quite take that race win from Jeffrey Hurlings, but the winner's trophy going to Jeffrey Hurlings for the ninth time this season, for the 99th time in his career, and for the fifth time as a world champion. A lot of emotions running wild down there, especially through the Red Bull KTM camp. Emotions of a different sort for those at Monster Energy Kawasaki and quite possibly Team HRC. But Dirk Grubel dutifully accepts the team trophy today. But it was red at the start of the day. It was on the front of a Monster Energy Kawasaki. It's gold today. It's the final round. And it will go on the front of a Red Bull KTM. Jeffrey Hurlings is world champion once again and for the fifth time and this is possibly going to be the best national anthem he's ever heard Second, third overall here in the final round of the FIM Motocross World Championship. Jeffrey Hurlings wins the MXGP of Cheetah Di Mantova. Tim Geiser, second overall for Team HRC. Monster Energy Kawasaki's Roman Fevre, third. And what has been a fantastic Grand Prix. Another enthralling contest between these three riders, the best three riders in the world right now. Absolutely incredible. While they shuffle their positions, take a look at the highlights of race two, the final race of the year, shall we? And how it shaped the eventual outcome of the World Championship. Over on the far side, all eyes on the three and the 84 as Fevre got the jump once again on Hurlings. They both held a nice tight line coming out of the turn though, but it was Jorge Prado, who else? With Fox Holshot number 18. Fevre emerged second. Hurlings third, there was a threat from Geiser initially. And then Fevre quick to get down the inside of Prado to take over the lead. And before the end of the lap, Hurlings had also gone through on the number 61 into second. And he didn't need a second invite when the door was left open. Further on round the lap, Geiser also down into third. And this was a decisive moment when Hurlings took over the lead from Roman Fevre. Geiser lurking dangerously in the background as well. Jeremy Siwa also in a battle for fourth. This pass secured him fourth in the championship. And then this was the defining moment. Getting on the gas, the back end hooking up, looping out Roman Fevre. He went from second to third, and from there he never really recovered. As Ruben Fernandez also found his way down the inside of Prado. But this is how close it was on the final lap. Jeffrey Hurlings maintained his gap 
over Tim Geiser to win the race, the Grand Prix, and his fifth world title, and the closest MXGP title chase in history. The World Championship medal ceremony then. Same three riders, slightly different order to what we just saw for the MXGP of Cheetah Di Mantova. Jeffrey Hurling's name on there again, look, 2021. Titanium and carbon fibre, the MXGP trophy will be delivered, and that's heavy as well, by the way, despite the titanium element. But third overall in the 2021 FIM MXGP Motocross World Championship. The defending champion, Tim Geiser and Team HRC. And you can see the disappointment on his face as well. Second overall, Monster Energy Kawasaki racing team, Roman Fevre. There was no fairy tale ending for the team that will disband it at the end of the season. Jeffrey Hurlings, Red Bull KTM, Factory Racing, will stand in the middle as he takes his gold medal for a fifth time. The bronze then to Tim Geiser. Mr. Antonio Alia Portella, the FIM CMS director, on hand to deliver all the medals, first of all to Tim Geiser, third overall. Second overall, Roman Fevre, it's been a fantastic return to form for him, but just fell short in that final race. It went right the way down to the final race of the championship. But all smiles for Jeffrey Hurlings, there can only be one winner. And in 2021, the MXGP world champion, Jeffrey Hurlings, and Red Bull KTM. And David Luongo, the CEO of Infront Motor Racing, hands the MXGP trophy to Jeffrey Herlings. He is the 2021 MXGP world champion. What an epic season we've had. And I think no matter where you are in the world, in terms of championships, both sides of the Atlantic, I don't think we've had anything like that for a very, very long time. Going down to the final race, tied on points, where there could only be one winner. Thank you, gentlemen, for providing us the best show we've ever witnessed. You'd like to be a fly on the wall right now listening to that conversation, wouldn't you? But a gold Red Bull helmet for Jeffrey Hurlings as he takes world title number five. And apologies if we're running slightly over time here. Just a quick photo for Tom Vial and Jeffrey Hurlings. <laughs> Normally, I think we would have an MX2 and MXGP world champion up there, but not sure where Maxim Renault's gone. But what, what a great advert for the FIM Motocross World Championship, MXGP. Don't think there'll be too many trucks leaving here in a hurry tonight. There'll be a Tony Cairoli party, there'll be a Jeffrey Hurlings party. And judging by the amount of people here in Italy, here for, for Tony Cairoli alone, I think it's, um, if it's not already started, then we're not far off kickoff time, I think. And here is Antonio Cairoli, congratulating. And also Jorge Prado, congratulating Jeffrey Hurlings, the new world champion. Thank you.
So I guess we will finally hear from our top three then. Banksy, his mechanic, he'll sleep tonight. I tell you what, he'll probably enjoy a cold one or 17 tonight as well. The stress of a mechanic, who would want it going into the final round? Aitken Shaw, everything is perfect. Anyway, here's Lisa. She's with our five-time world champion, Jeffrey Hurlings. How were the nerves? How was the race? And how's he feeling? Jeffrey Hurling, you're our 2021 MXGP world champion. There's been highs, there have been lows. You've been through the wars. You've really had to dig deep this season. And it makes it more worthwhile, doesn't it? If people still say I'm not a true world champion, I, I, don't, I don't know when I will be, man. I missed four motos and I still came out as a championship. And I did get two points for free, but I won with five. So uh, I think I deserve to win this championship. And, uh, Still, want to thank Roman and them for the great, great season. And those guys were super fast. And it's just a pity only one can win. But uh, yeah, next year will be tough again. But for this year, we're going to celebrate tonight. I want to thank Red Bull KTM Racing for the great job. And uh, big monkey give my back. Thanks, Jeffrey. Second overall in the championship, we have Roman Febra. Roman, you took the flight down to the very last race. You've been solid all year. Just, I guess, felt the pressure at the end there. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, I feel mad uh, to myself for sure. Um, but yeah, that's racing. It's uh, it's the hard way to to lose. But um, it's like it's like this. Um, yeah, I gave my all, and uh, yeah, at the moment it's really tough. But um, yeah, I will uh, go through and then uh, battle next year. Okay. Thanks, Roman. Thank Third overall in the championship, we have Tim Geiser. Tim, I guess the turning point for you is on Sunday. Um, not ideal at all. How, how do you reflect on what happened and how you're feeling now? I mean, definitely I'm, uh, I'm disappointed, you know. We work uh, to be first, but anyway, you know, on the end, just one can win. Uh, we had a little uh, bad luck on Sunday, you know, with, uh, with gaining the penalty. But anyway, that's sport, you know, uh, definitely try, I will try to regroup as soon as possible uh, and already I'm really looking forward to, to next year, you know, I will, uh, I will work hard during the off season uh, and try to attack for the, for the title next year. So a uh, huge thank you to everyone around me, all the team. We were working really hard. They were always behind me, uh, even in tough times when I was injured, when everything didn't click like, like I want. Uh, you know, my girlfriend, everybody around me, all the fans, they were traveling to, to support me on the races. So uh, thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Tim. Tim Geiser rounds out the 2021 season, third overall. And what's been an absolute epic journey of highs, lows, a roller coaster of emotions, not just for him but for Roman Fevre and Jeffrey Hurlings as well. Tim Geiser picking up four Grand Prix victories on the way here to third overall this campaign. Roman Fevre picking up the win in Belgium, but he did manage a bunch of podiums as well, but he just fell short in the final race. Just a mistake right at the wrong moment. But he'll come back stronger next year, I'm sure. But Jeffrey Hurlings, you cannot take anything away from him. He has had to dig deep several times this year. And when it mattered, it was he who came through. He won the final race, the final Grand Prix, and with it, World Championship number five. Normally, we would be done here, but there is a, a little presentation down there with Tony Cairoli and Aero, I believe. Which is why there are still so many people hanging around here. We are at the final round of the FIA Motocross World Championship, the MXGP of Cheetah Di Mantova, nine-time World champion Tony Cairoli retires from MXGP. And the Red Bull KTM rider has had a fantastic journey.
Ci vedremo più avanti. Ci vedremo più avanti. Keeping quiet there for the Italian fans that are watching on MXGP TV. But uh, maybe not the fairy tale that he would have wanted here. He didn't finish the first race due to a broken gear shift and uh, a tough second race after a poor start. But Jill Wife in the background there, baby Chase. Not so much a baby now, but his kid. And uh, another guy over his shoulder there. Ben van Belthoven. A tall uh, guy with the phone in his hand in the orange top. Very much a part of the support network for Antonio Cairoli and everybody else. And uh, Tanya just over the other shoulder there. So much a part of that integral support for the Red Bull Dicali KTM squad. The two champions end this year. Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MX2s. Maxim Renault, the MX2 world champion, Jeffrey Hurlings, Red Bull KTM Factory Racing, the MXGP world champion 2021. So pretty much one of the last photo opportunities for our two world champions. Congratulations, guys. And we'll see you at the awards a little later on. Hopefully we won't be running too far behind on that either. Six o'clock, we're supposed to be going live there. But what a great podium to reflect a fantastic season. And grazie, Tony. Thank you, Tony Cairoli, the 222, the nine time world champion. A final farewell to his army of fans, whether they're from here in Italy or anywhere else over the world. Look at that nine world championships. Ninety-four Grand Prix victories, 182 race wins, and 179 podiums for the Red Bull KTM rider. You've done an absolute power of good for the sport of MXGP, a true ambassador. And you will be very much missed in and around the paddock. I'm sure you won't be completely disappearing, but Iro Helmets delivering him a special edition gold helmet as he walks off into retirement. We've already retired the 222 number in the same way that Stefan Evert's number 72 was retired until Liam Evert started riding. There's the race shirt. Look, look at the championships on the back in the numbers, the detail. But Antonio Cairoli, an absolute legend and nine times world champion. There's his titles on the back of the shirt. 2005, 2007, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 18. Or 17, actually. <laughs> 14 world championships between them. Jeffrey Hurlings, Antonio Cairoli. Great picture, great job. <laughs> Not worthy. Grazie, Tony. Grazie mille. Even comes with its own gold case look. Well, there's nothing else we can say about Tony Cairoli, really. We've just done the race wins, the stats, the podiums, the Grand Prix victories. Pit Byra. What a man he has been for KTM. And great to see Pit Byra here as well. I'm sure he wouldn't have missed it for the world. And all kinds of things going on here, banners and all sorts. For the nine-time world champion. 94 Grand Prix victories. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I was hoping that it would be Grand Prix victory number 95, just to round things up. Podium number 180. But uh, just not able to manage that today. That DNF in race one didn't help. But for Red Bull KTM, factory racing. The banner for 
Jeffrey Hurlings, the MXGP World Champion 2021, five world titles now. Harry Norton there, just closest to us, the mechanic for Tom Vial. But this looks like it's going to be the whole of the Red Bull KTM squad there in the white beanie. Rennie Hoffer. And the party will begin imminently. But we are out of time as those celebrations continue. We will see you all once again in the new season 2022 when we resume, some told, sometime at the end of February. But from me, Paul Manning, thanks to everybody involved in the production here, everybody behind the scenes, the riders, the teams, and uh, we will see you again next year. Hope you've enjoyed the show this year. It was absolutely epic. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now. Oh, my God.